everybody, it's a crazy Van Gogh Shami. Hope you guys are having an amazing day. So today is a video, sort of a reaction, but sort of a, like a breakdown of things that happened over the weekend at San Diego Comic Con. Um, especially one specific moment. Um, I reacted to it like on my own, just because again, like I haven't been really reacting and keeping up to date with a lot of the big events, just because of stuff. And I've been enjoying unemployment and doing a lot of painting and streaming, which has been great. But also, I've also kept away from Marvel and Star Wars recently, just because <sighs> the fandom. And also just because of the quality of the shows and stuff. Mm -mm. It's just, you know. But I want to start watching the shows again and maybe watch it in my own time. But anyway, we're not here for that. We are here to talk about a certain announcement that happened over the weekend that has had mixed opinions about it, and I think I am one of the people who has a mixed opinion about it. Now, before you come for me, I'm just gonna, you know, this is my opinion. Don't hate me for it. If you're happy for it, that's all good. Don't get me wrong. It's all good. I just have my two cents to sort of add to the conversation. So yeah, I mean, let's jump into it. Read the title. This is basically about the announcement that happened over the weekend for the announcement of who is going to be playing Doctor Doom. Now, Doctor Doom, he is actually one of my favorite villains. So that's why I was like, oh, this will be fun. Like, cause I saw like the thumbnail and I was like, oh, that that'll be interesting. And then I watched it and was very surprised by what we got. Obviously, if you have heard the news, um, Robert Downey Jr. has been cast to play uh, Doctor Doom in the Doomsday movie that's coming out in 2026, I'm pretty sure it was. Um, and it has a lot of people turning heads. Now, don't get me wrong, again, um, I absolutely adore Robert Downey Jr. He kickstarted the whole Marvel kit and caboodle. We wouldn't be sitting here without him starting the whole thing. He was incredible as Iron Man. He will always forever be known as Tony Stark and is literally like the persona of him even in just his acting and just normal day-to-day -day life. However, this comes, uh... I think there's been a very different reaction to, however, I think there has been a very different reaction to him being cast as Doctor Doom, especially because obviously Doctor Doom is from, it should be, and I've seen people being said that he should be played by a Romani actor. Now I also agree representation is so important and it is so nice to see representation shown on the screen because again, in big international like stages like Marvel it's so incredible like what influence can have over film and even just like sort of a ripple effect we saw that with Black Panther and even with Black Panther 2 with the Aztec storyline that we had w with Namor so I would really hope that we would have a Romani actor playing Doctor Doom who is most well known for that as well but also, I just, I don't know, like, personally, this is my take on it again, like, this is my opinion. I think, I don't know, I think, like, it would be so incredible if we had had an unknown actor play the part of Doctor Doom, or even just somebody else in general. Not to say that uh, Robert Daddy Judy can play another character, it's just more that Doctor Doom has always been famous because he's been unseen. No one knows what he looks like, I think, like from the comic books I've read. I haven't read a lot of them, but I've read a few. And from the ones I've read, he doesn't take his mask off. And I know that obviously, like, maybe they're going to build up some storyline with this character in the version that they're going to create in the movie, but his flair comes from wearing a mask. Now, as we know, like, in media itself, there are such incredible aura and a sense of mystery that comes to characters with masks. We've seen that with the Mandalorian, with Master Chief, all over the shop we've seen it with different characters. Not to say that Robert Downey Jr. can't bring that to the table, but also it would have been incredible if they had kept like maybe the actor a secret, maybe even to the very end towards the promotion of the movie. I think that would have been very interesting to have that. Either way, going into this, I think just, uh, like, especially with some news that came out, I think it was yesterday or today, um, I wanted to discuss it as well, especially the terms and conditions that happened to be negotiated between Robert and Marvel in terms of how this movie is going to go ahead. Now, it has been said that he is going to be paid over $80 million for this movie and has a private jet, security, and his own, I think it was, um, what is it called, the trailer, like, basically, just like, you know, very lavish living while he's doing the film. Now, look, especially in a living crisis at the moment, I can't judge him, he's a celebrity, he's got all the money in the world, but... 
Ugh, especially after the SAG stuff last year and the 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 um the protesting from his fellow writers and just everybody who is in the crew, you'd think that maybe he would have a little bit of humbling to maybe look after everybody else. And it's just eighty million dollars. Like that is a l heap amount of money, um, especially because of the fact that that's an amount that is usually put into a film alone. And so it's shocking to see that Marvel has put that much money towards just one man. And more importantly, just because he they've paid him that much when that could be going into all of their other shows, especially the Marvel shows, which has been getting a lot of criticism because not only have they been a bit of lacking quality, but also because the episodes, and this has always been a criticism from me and many people in the community, that we should not have the eight episode or six episode format. We should be going l bigger and larger with these shows and not holding back. So to see one man who, yes, he's gained an incredible amount of legacy to his name, Robert Downey Jr., but $80 million. It just, I don't know, like, it just sits the wrong way. And especially, again, after last year, the incredible fight that went into the SAG protests um, for the acting industry. It's insane to think that Marvel would pay, or, like, Disney would pay $80 million for one person alone. Again, going back to the origins of, like, Doctor Doom, and even just talking about bringing Robert into the story of Doctor Doom as well... I don't think it would necessarily tarnish him as Iron Man, but I, I don't know, like, I would like to think that maybe this is a misdirect, because I would love, of course, we are still in the multiverse, from what I know, we may have moved on from the multiverse from what I know from Marvel, but I might be wrong, um, but from my knowledge is that with this, I think it would have been so good if yes maybe he is playing Doctor Doom and maybe it's an alternate version of Tony Stark or someone who became Doctor Doom and then we actually get the real Doctor Doom whether it's in Doomsday or in the Fantastic Four because I know with Fantastic Four it's also multiversal it's being put in the 60s or something from memory I'm very excited for that though that looks absolutely amazing and the cast already just obviously Pedro I love him so I'm excited and Vanessa Kirby <gasps> It's just going to be, I feel like it's going to be a good one. But, go, moving on from that, in terms of the Doctor Doom stuff, ugh, I'm just, yeah, again, like, I'm, I'm very nervous because, like, again, like, I feel like it would be so good just to get somebody who was not even unknown. Again, like I said before, like, it would have been good to get somebody new to the, basically to the role of Doctor Doom. Maybe someone that maybe, you know, maybe was more appropriate or maybe, again, is of unknown maybe he's rising to stardom and we don't know who he is or they are and i think it would have been very interesting in terms of if how they marketed that particular character when it came to it i feel like that would have been such a cool aspect that they could have taken advantage of but yeah again sorry i went off topic a little bit in terms of the whole thing with robert is just like i don't think it'll tarnish tony stark's legacy but more just like mm, like uh, I don't know. I don't know how to explain because, like, I'm not sure if I'm explaining it right or if it's coming out, like, incorrectly. But, like, I feel like it would just be really good if they just, from the get-go, went with someone who would play Doctor Doom. But maybe, you know, it was someone different. Because, again, there's alternate storylines you can go with. Again, multiversal stuff. Maybe an alternate Tony Stark being like, you know, maybe we had the Tony Stark who saved the world, now we have the Tony Stark or like the alternate version of that becoming Doctor Doom and someone who really, like obviously turns the world upside down. I think it'll be interesting to see where they go with it, but again, I'm just, ugh, I'm very worried about where it could go just because this is a huge villain and I think a lot of people, especially like people who grew up in the 90s and stuff like that just grew up with Doctor Doom a lot like whether it was an animation or in the comics and you just know that he is foul and he is one of the coolest villains obviously 
and with everything happening with Jonathan uh, Major uh, because of what happened with his like basically his private life and stuff like that we're not going to get anything else with the Kang dynasty which is very heartbreaking for me because I love Kang I was so looking forward to the story and just I don't know what they did with Quantum Mania so like that was like ugh. and then now with this announcement it's ugh, I don't know it just feels like it's going a little bit downhill and a lot of people are saying they basically pulled this out of the bag because Marvel's been going a little bit downhill um but I think like the in terms of that if they really are thinking that this is the last straw that they can basically pull the audience back into Marvel I completely disagree I think that they could really take a step back and have a look at the structure that they're making their shows and their not their movies necessarily, because I haven't been watching the movies, so I can't really have an opinion on that. In terms of the shows, though, I think they should take a massive step back and look at the format. Because this is the same with the Star Wars stuff. I haven't watched Acolyte, but I know a lot of people were saying we needed more structure with the show. Um, which, again, has been a massive complaint since COVID, since the show started. Because it feels like these, these shows were meant to be movies. And they were instead made into six episode, eight episode shows to sort of fill in the gaps. I think the only real positive, sh like for me, I enjoyed Moon Knight, WandaVision, I think it was. Um, I'm trying to have a look. Let me have a look at my, <laughs> my, my studio just to see what shows we watched. Oh yeah, Haw Hawkeye was a good holiday one. I enjoyed that, it's especially like they like summed up his story and stuff like that. And the whole thing with Natasha really well. Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Uh, also was very much like it could have had like a couple more episodes uh, just trying to see Loki Loki season one was uh, okay like I think it could have had a bit of improvement Loki season two though I I watched that in my off time and that was actually really good Loki season two was very very good and it was a good end to that particular story no spoilers but I really enjoyed how they finished that off I haven't watched any of the other shows Moon Knight actually yeah Moon Knight it was good. I loved Moon Knight, but another criticism that I had was like, we could have had two more episodes or a couple more episodes just to let it breathe because it feels like with these shows, you're rushing through the story and you're not getting, ha like having time to breathe and be with the characters at all. So that's what my biggest criticism really is with these shows. But going back anyway to the whole Marvel movie stuff with Robert Downey Jr. and obviously the announcement of Doom, yeah, I... I uh, it's difficult because again like it could go well but also it can go badly I guess just because again like it, I don't know it's an interesting thing like I love Robert Downey Jr but I just don't know I don't know about Doctor Doom I and I love that character so much too and especially because he always wears his mask so it's like again like I would have liked with Doctor Doom like we had marketing where you just didn't know who it was and then you find out later who the actor was. I feel like, again, they could have really taken advantage of it for a long, long time until they had to either announce the trailer or they had to do something. But yeah, I guess to hype everybody up for the future of Marvel, yeah, they really wanted a big announcement like this, So, which is fair. But yeah, I guess it'll be interesting to see what happens, I guess. Um, I don't know, leave your thoughts in the comments below. I would love to hear people's opinions about this, but this is just my personal take on it. This is something I've been sitting on for a couple of days as well, just because like, I was like, oh, not sure how I feel about it, because it was like, oh, but then, oh, like, oh, I don't know how to feel about this. So yeah, if you have anything to say, please let me know. I would love to hear your opinions on it, but yeah, I thought I'd make this quick video and just talk about it, just because it was very interesting. So yeah, thank you guys for watching this. Leave your thoughts below. If not, it's all good. And yeah, hope you guys have a lovely day. Crazy Vega out.